to another exciting episode of Venture North. I'm your host Rob Remus and we're here on the Nipigon River, home to the world record brook trout, and we have a special guest with us today to guide us on the river, Dan Klatt. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hi, Robbie. Thanks so much for the introduction there. Uh, we're going to be fishing Nipigon River here today. Uh, we got about four or five species of fish available to catch. We'll be right back after these messages. <music> Nipigon River, well renowned for its world record brook trout, also plays host to a variety of trophy sport fish. The fall season offers a plate of Chinook salmon, lake trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, walleye and whitefish. Some authorities claim the Nipigon River to be the greatest trout river in North America. The river is 32 miles long and originally had 10 miles of whitewater. Today that has decreased to 3 miles of rapids. A water management plan has been in effect to regulate and benefit all users of the Nipigon River system. A set minimum water flow agreement has partnered the MNR with Ontario Hydro to better coordinate water levels during fish spawning runs. Ontario Hydro has seen this river as a great resource for power production and has three dams on the river. Cameron Falls, built in 1920, Virgin Falls in 1925 to raise the water level in Lake Nipigon, the Alexander Dam in 1930, and Pine Portage in 1950. Although this has benefited man's needs, it has also changed nature's balance on the river. The oldest of runs are now flooded, but new ones have been created and are flourishing with trout. The lowest dam is the Alexander, and as the farthest stretch, the Lake Superior fish can migrate upstream. The river with its fast water, incoming spring-fed streams and updwellings create a pure, cold environment even during the hot summer and can hold a year-round population of resident trout. The river water levels can fluctuate greatly and with many mudslides and underwater shoals can be a danger to anyone unfamiliar with its waters. The preferred methods to fish this river is either from shore or a medium-sized boat. It takes a motor 15 horsepower or greater to reach the upper turbine pools. And to stay in one spot may require half to full throttle. Tackle included should be a medium to stiff rod with 100 to 200 yards of 8 to 12 pound abrasion resistant line. A deep net, a variety of lures like rapalas, small spinners, little cleos, plugs, jigs and live bait have all proven to be extremely effective on all species of trout in the river. On today's show, we have joining us expert river guide, Dan Klatt. And with his hand-tied jigs, we set our sights to target the variety of fish available on this late season outing. Our first location had us powering up to the turbine pools at the Alexander Dam. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is great, we don't know what's on there. But what a fighter, wow. This current's phenomenal. Whoa, I can't budget. We're probably talking 10 pound salmon. <laughs> oh, this is great. First cast. I'll have to tell ya, Dan sure knows his stuff on the Nipigon River. Look at him, he's cutting right across the river. <laughs> Whoa, incredible. Wow, it's a big fish. Whoa. I love it. Thanks, Dan. That's great. Wow. Those jig flies you make are phenomenal. First cast. What a beautiful fish. Let's uh, get this guy right in the water here. Usually I'm barbless, so I left a little point on it. You're a rookie. I appreciate it. What a beautiful fish. Here we go, folks. Be right there waiting for you. This white headed jig with a bit of brown, unbelievable pattern. Dan knows this river like no one else. I'm glad we're out today. So folks, you stay with us. We're in for a great day. Oh, look at the fight. Oh, the drag's just screaming. Whoa, oh, the four foot jump out of the water. Incredible. You'd swear you're in Alaska fighting the big fish out in the rivers. Whoa, another jump. <laughs> this is great. 
don't know, it's a nice chrome looking fish. I don't know if it's another steelhead or a salmon. But the salmon has definitely just come up out of the lake. Wow. Woo. What do we got here? Oh, I think we got a Chinook. Whoa, a nice salmon under the boat. Well, oh, Dan, maybe you can get a, grab that net for me again. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got a couple of things on our mind here. Beautiful job. <laughs> Look at that. Apparently there might be a Chinook pink cross and if there is, this might be one of them. That's a beautiful looking fish. There you go, Rob. Thank you. What a fighter. Oh. Incredible. Look at that. Whoa. Nice and silver. They haven't been out of the lake for that long. Haven't darkened up. What a beautiful looking fish. You know, these fish come up and spawn. They do their cycle. Then they die off and uh, add nutrients to the river. So you know what? When you do get a few salmon like this, you don't feel too bad at keeping them, knowing that their life cycle's over and that they'll be dying off after they spawn up here in just another few weeks. So this one's so extremely fresh, and we haven't had a, a nice meal of fresh salmon in some time. So with, with Dan's blessing, I think we'll put this in the live well. And it's just a nice size for eating for a family meal. I think we'll keep this one. Get our lines back in, see if we can't show you some more hot action. What a phenomenal river. One of the 10 best in Canada. The Nipigon River here in Ontario, Canada. Oh. What a fish. Look at that drag go. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, he's way out there. Phenomenal. What a fish. <laughs> they fight way better in this river than they do in lakes, I'll tell you that. Or especially trying to pull a few up while you're ice fishing. This is spectacular. Wow, what a heavy fish. I sure hope this fish is five pounds. That'd be beautiful. That's How's that net? We got that net handy? Yeah, that's twice we just changed baits and got uh, the results. Of yeah, Dan, you suggested that uh, going into the multicolored special pattern that uh, that you designed, and boy, did it ever pay off. Wow, what a heavy fish. Look at that. <laughs> We're just towing it. I can see it, a little shadow of it out the back of the boat. There it is. Wow, what a spectacular speckled trout. Unbelievable. What a day on the water. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah, that's a pretty nice fish, but we might as well let them go anyway, so I don't think we should put them in that. What type of weight would you say that is, Dan? That's getting near you five pounds. 20, 21 inches long. Semi-healthy. Pretty tired now. Pretty sure I got the barb off my boat. Boy, that's nice. Beautiful looking fish. Look at the colors on that. That's a female too, so you might as well let her do her thing there. Yep. Oh no, there's a little bit of a job. There we go. This shouldn't bother it too much. You want to try to get that hook out? Yep. What a... Oh, look at that. Just Barbie. popped out. Ready? Set? Here we go. Bye bye. Thanks, Dan. That was gorgeous. What a fish. Yeah. You can't say enough about these jig flies. They're working so great. You know, there's a few fly fishermen that have great success here on the river, but we're doing so well with these. Dan spent the time, years of experience, things that you just can't pick up on yourself. I think it's a, a sixth sense that Dan has that, that gets him to find these special spots to pick up these trophy fish. Big, maybe three and a half pounds, four pounds. I like it though, it's kind of interesting. Look at that. Oh, well, maybe a little more than three and a half. Tire himself out. No. Here we go. Here we go, he's all tired out I think. 
slide them up, get that hook out of there, get them back in the drink. You really swallowed this one. Come here, come here, Mark. I oh, wish I had the pliers handy. Look at that, way down his throat. There we go. Barbless, hey, it really helps. He's okay. Look at him. Oh, there he goes. Brook trout got a lot of stamina, so you just got to kind of let them tire themselves out. It's right in the corner there. Yeah, look at that, right in front of us too, eh? That's what we call the short line. Yeah. Single hook, you can pull a little bit. I prefer the single hook over a three prong for this reason. And Brook trout will sit there, you think he's kind of tired and he's got lots of energy left. This one, I don't know, he's a little tired. Another nice fish anyways, eh? I think that's our third today, around five or six pounds. This one's pretty. Yeah, the circles are getting smaller. I don't know if uh, he's ready to be beached yet. I don't want to hurt him too much. There we go, Mr. Nice Trout. Let him thrash a bit, and then when he settles down, you can just walk right up to him. Come here, baby. Oh, I think I left the barb in there. There we go. Mr. Nice oh, man. he's there. He is head of the boat. There's the lime. Whoa, there's a run. He saw the boat. He didn't like that. Whew. Sometimes they say that it takes a minute per pound to get a fish in. So if he's 15 pounds, we're in for a wait. I hope you're not going anywhere. Oh, he's close now, right beside the boat. Oh, he whacked that sideways. That is a nice salmon. It's getting pretty tired. Yes, good job, Dan. <laughs> Look at how dark that fish is. Amazing. That is one heavyweight. Let's see if I can get a hold of him without getting beat up too much. Oh. Hey. hey. Venture North Outdoor Show. We'll be back with more excitement right after these messages. I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. The number of salmon and brook trout here in the Nipigon River in August is unsurpassed and it's one of the only rivers you can get to by car and have world-class fishing like this. Next time you get a chance to head to the outdoors, venture north.